How's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome to October Lake in Planet Zoo, a series where we're working on creating this really large park situated in the Canadian Highlands. In today's episode, we're going to be introducing a pair of red pandas into this semi-arboreal habitat that we're going to be working on. If that does sound good to you and if you do like today's video, please do consider giving it a like and of course subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. I currently make videos every Wednesday. Now let's talk about what it is we're going to be doing today. As I mentioned before, this habitat is going to be semi-arboreal, so we're going to have lots and lots of climbing space for these red pandas. These guys spend most of their time in the trees and I kind of want to reflect that as much as I can in this habitat. I want to give them as much climbing space as they, you know, as they want so they can just climb their hearts out because these guys really do make use of it. In real life, um, the habitats that I've seen for red pandas do really make use of that. Uh, the fact that they do spend most of their time up in the trees. And some of my favorites as well, I think, have really um, quite ingenious ways of using that uh, climbing instinct of the red pandas to actually get them to be closer to the guests without them feeling too stressed out. In fact, uh, one of my favorite experiences was being in Singapore Zoo sometime last year. And it's kind of, it has this offshoot called the River Safari and that's where they have their pandas and red pandas. And their red panda habitat was brilliantly designed, I think. They had plenty of space for the red pandas themselves, but then it had a guest path that kind of walked underneath the branches where the red pandas would climb. So you get this really, really uh, quite intimate look at the red pandas because they were right above you. And it is really brilliant and in fact if you want to see the footage of my trip there and the red panda i'll put a link in the corner if i remember but um please do check out one of my older videos from quite a long time ago more than a year ago where i was in singapore zoo and i do have footage of the uh the red pandas in that one and you can see how well done that habitat was you can tell the red pandas are not stressed in any way they're absolutely enjoying their life there and because the climbing structures allowed them to get on top of the guests and above them, it means that they're not as stressed because they're at, you know, they have the high ground, they have that security, and that is so, so useful to have whenever you have an animal in captivity, is to give them that sense of security by putting them at a level where they can observe their surroundings and feel like they have a full observational view of everything around them. Now, on screen, you will have seen me kind of get started with the, the bare bones kind of structure of the habitat. And you can see I have put that path through the habitat, which is where I want the guests to kind of use to traverse. And as you may have noticed, that is a smaller path than usual. It's not the four meter path, it is a three meter path. And to get that width, it's a little bit finicky. You kind of have to use um, like the Q part and then delete and replace. And it's a little bit tricky, but there are really good tutorials on how to do that. I would recommend, uh, I believe Paulsley and Rudy Vankamel have both done a tutorial on that. Um, did Silverette do one? He might have. But yeah, just uh, check out those channels. They got amazing tutorials on how to do this. And here you will see me start adding in some of these kind of dead trees that have been cut. They look uh, really good. We do see a lot of these in red panda habitats in zoos. Uh, trees like this are brilliant for giving them lots of climbing space. And then what I'm going to do now is use these climbing logs to kind of connect them so that the pandas can get from one tree to another without ever having to touch the ground, which is kind of um, the idea. They In the wild, they don't really touch the ground very much, if at all. They do they do walk on the ground sometimes, of course they can, but they, they absolutely prefer to spend their time in the trees. They climb so, so well. And in fact, they, they climb so well that it's been observed in the wild that they can climb straight down a tree, um, like they'd be on top of a tree. They walk down, like head first without falling at all. They just vertically walk head down, which is crazy. Um, they've got insane uh, grip strength. They're really good at, at climbing. I, I cannot overstress that. They're just amazing. Anyways, while we're doing all this on screen, let's talk a little bit more about the red pandas. Now, for you longtime viewers of the channel, you will know the red panda is absolutely one of my favorite animals in the game. I used to um, make, I made a video like well over a year ago now saying, what my top 10 animals in Planet Zoo were and the red panda was absolutely quite high on that list. Which, no surprise, these guys are incredible. In the game, they're just beautiful, so well designed, and as an animal, they're just so adorable and so interesting. 
And when I say they're interesting, I really do mean it. They're very unique in the animal kingdom. They are from the family of mustelids, so they're closely related to things like raccoons, uh, skunks, uh, weasels, that sort of thing. Uh, they're not pandas at all, of course, they're not the same as, you know, the much larger panda bears. And that is, you know, absolutely um, reasonable. I mean, if you look at them, they look completely different. But the reason they're called pandas, uh, it's kind of like a little bit fuzzy why they're called pandas. It might be from a specific Nepali word because they are from the East Himalayas and um, China as a whole. But they are very similar to panda bears in the sense that they both are bamboo specialists. They eat mostly bamboo, neither of them can digest cellul uh, cellulose from regular leaves and stuff. So they spend most of the time eating bamboo. They occasionally supplement their diets with fish, birds, insects, so they can eat meat. But generally speaking, they spend most of the time eating bamboo. And in one really cool instance of convergent evolution, they have these kind of like opposable thumbs almost it's, it's called like a false thumb and that is an extension of the wrist bone and it allows it to eat bamboo like by gripping it it's really cool that's um, one similarity it does share with the panda bear and uh, i mentioned the word conversion evolution now what that means is when two completely unrelated animals evolve similar features to kind of deal with the same environmental pressures so for example dolphins and fish are completely unrelated but they both have similar shapes because it allows them to swim through the water really efficiently so that's kind of convergent evolution so talking more about these uh, red pandas they are just really cool but unfortunately they are uh, somewhat endangered they are threatened by forest fragmentation and habitat loss which is unfortunate but um, they do have pretty good captive breeding programs going on in captivity uh, the stud book for uh, red pandas, uh, a stud book by the way, is a little like document they have kind of listing all the captive individuals and allows zookeepers and people who manage zoos to kind of crossbreed um, over large distances so that you don't end up inbreeding the, the red pandas or anything like that. So the stud book is currently managed by Rotterdam Zoo in the Netherlands and there's quite a lot of red pandas in captivity, I believe. Uh, somewhere around 800 and they are getting a lot of births as well as in they're really successful with um with the breeding program which is very very cool now going back to what's going on on screen now you will have seen me do a lot more work with this habitat i'm doing the foliage work here now keeping it to relatively temperate and uh, tiger type foliage these red pandas in the wild do live in much more cold regions uh, sometimes in very very snowy uh, mountainsides, especially in the Himalayas in Nepal. Uh, my mom actually once sent me a photo because my parents used to go hiking in, in the Himalayas quite a lot. And while they were going up to, I can't remember, it might have been the Annapurna Trail, they actually spotted what they think was probably a red panda corpse, which was quite cool to see, like, um, just because they, they wouldn't have expected to see a red panda at all, let alone um, a dead one which is obviously a bit unfortunate but still very interesting to see. In the wild they are predated upon by other mustelids so um, other mustelids in their habitat and uh, snow leopards do tend to eat them as well which is kind of interesting as well. Just imagine seeing a snow leopard hunt a red panda that's crazy to think. Unfortunately humans are considered a predator of the red panda. Um, not as much now. Poaching is still a thing, but it's more like bushmeat and stuff, which again isn't as common now, anyways. But still, eh, not 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 great. They do have great um, thick fur for surviving out in these cold temperatures, which is a beautiful, beautiful shade of red. They have like slight variations, so you can get more orangey or more deep maroon colors, sometimes a bit more brown. But it's it's a very gorgeous coat. In the game, I think they replicated it very, very well. Now, while we're just uh, finishing up the star center on screen, I just want to talk about some of these amazing behaviors they've added to the pa red pandas in game, which are very true to life. So you may have seen videos of red pandas like rearing up on their hind legs and putting up their hands like they've been like, you know, caught committing a burglary or something and they've just got to be like, oh, hands up. It's a really interesting behavior and they actually do that for self-defense to make themselves look larger and more threatening. Of course it doesn't work on us humans, they just look even cuter which is kind of <laughs> completely um, not what they're going for. 
But um, they're, just, they're just the best. They're absolutely so adorable, such charismatic animals, and especially when they do things like that, you just, you can't help but just fall in love with them. They're amazing animals. Unfortunately, because they are so cute, some people have tried keeping them as pets, which is not a great idea. They're not suited to be pets. They, they need like a lot of, you know, a lot of space, a lot of enrichment. And again, they're very, very much wild animals, not, not at all suited to being pets. <laughs> but yeah, they're just very, very cool animals. So that's it for pretty much me talking about the red pandas themselves. They're, again, I can't say enough good things about them. Super interesting. One of the best animals in the game. But yeah, let's talk now just towards the end of what I'm doing on screen. So here you're seeing me kind of make the external, uh, sorry, the exterior fence almost for the habitat itself. It's not as much a fence as it is a glass wall. I wanted something that isn't really climbable because Red pandas are absolutely really good escape artists, not just in the game, in real life too. Um, there are so many instances of red pandas having escaped captivity, it's genuinely kind of crazy how many there are. Like, uh, if you just google red panda escape, you'll see there's been so many. In Birmingham Zoo last year, there was a, was it last year or recently anyways, there was a red panda that escaped for like a good few months and then reappeared out of nowhere. Um, there was Ohio Zoo, they had a red panda escape, but yeah, they just escape artists, so having them contained well is super important. And here, what I'm going to do for that is to have primarily glass walls around the outside, and then for the guests entering to use this pathway, uh, they are going to have to go through an airlock system, which is generally quite normal for most uh, aviary style habitats in zoos, or even any sort of habitat where the guests are getting a bit more up close and personal with the animals. An airlock system is super useful and keeps them, the animals very secure and even if they get through the first set of doors it is unlikely they're going to get through the second before someone notices there's a red panda in the door. That probably shouldn't be a thing, you know what I mean? So to make the airlock system you can see these two entrances here. And by the way I'm using a lot of these stained wood pieces that came with the aquatic DLC. Absolutely gorgeous pieces and very modern as well, so they work really really well here. Um, here, actually before we finish up, here I'm building a very simple red panda shelter. So it's an elevated shelter and it's attached directly to the staff building behind this. And I imagine, of course it doesn't work like this in the game, but I imagine if this was a real zoo, um, there, there would be a hole in the back and the pandas could enter the staff area itself. And that's how the staff would monitor them, keep their um, health checks up, that sort of thing and make sure they're all kind of safe and secure. At this point in the video, I've already introduced red pandas and checked their traversable areas. And uh, let me just say, they absolutely make full use of all the climbing equipment in their build. Uh, they, you can see them walking completely across the habitat without touching the ground once, which is absolutely what I was intending. And while the guests are walking on the path, you can see the red pandas walking across their, across their wooden log on the top as well. Finishing up the shelter here, I just added a little ridge so they don't fall off. Of course they wouldn't anyways, but it's just a nice touch to make the building itself look just that tiny bit more realistic. I'm not sure what else I actually end up doing here. I'm trying to think about what's finished or what I do here. I'm just adding in a few more climbing structures. Uh, the last bit of this video will be me just adding in that airlock system, which I think works uh, pretty well. It gives a good idea of how this looks. One thing I didn't mention in last week's video or the video before that is that I've actually opened the zoo now to the public so you do see guests coming in, which uh, <laughs> I completely forgot what that was like because prior to October Lake starting, I was doing that old, uh, the older zoo, Sanakov Land, which I will get back to by the way, but um, I was doing that and I was playing that on my laptop and because the performance wasn't great, I never opened the zoo because having a lot of guests in the zoo will uh, kind of decrease performance somewhat. So I just never opened it, so I forgot what it was like to actually have guests in a zoo. So reopening, well not reopening, but opening October Lake was kind of crazy. Now you see guests everywhere and it's just like, at first it's kind of cool, but then I get kind of annoyed. I'm like, could you get out of the way so I can build? <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, one thing to note, by the way, if you are going to do something like this, this build with the three meter path, be aware that the guests do glitch through it somewhat. They don't fully fit onto the three meter path, so they, like, if especially if it's a larger group. Some of them do end up um, kind of clipping out just a little bit onto the side of the path. It's not a big deal, especially if you have fewer guests. 
Right now, as you can see, there's loads of guests on, on the path, but that's mainly because I just added the animals. Once they're used to the novelty of there being a new animal, there's a lot fewer guests as well. So it's not too big a deal. Here I'm working on the airlock system, just making it relatively simple. Um, just using again the stained, stained wooden pieces to add a little bit more interest. And then I haven't actually added a door here just because I can't remember why. <laughs> I think I must have forgotten, but I haven't added the actual doors. But in any case, the red pandas cannot escape um, the habitat, which is super important. It's very nice not to have escaped red pandas. And I think the airlock system looks really nice. In fact, I'm really happy with the whole look of this habitat. I'm going to use more of these stained wood pieces, I think, in this color because they look very modern and very sleek, especially with the the breeze block trim and the um, the glass pieces. I think they look super, super good. Very happy with how that all looks. Anyways, video is coming very quickly to an end and I've lost track of time as usual. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I'll be back next Wednesday with another video just for you guys. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Please do like the video if you did like it. And of course, subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.